These servers may look the same, but one is liquid cooled and the other one is traditionally fan cooled. The difference is a massive amount of power consumption between the two and at a rack level that can save several kilowatts. So in this video, we're gonna check out why that is and uh, all the really cool bits that go into that. <laughs> Let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and today we're gonna be talking about liquid cooling. But for this video, well, we're going to type hey. Because I went to the massive Quanta headquarters and we're filming this in one of these labs that I actually went to, I think last in like 2018 or 2019, because the topic of today is the QCT cool rack. And let's just get to it guys. Liquid cooling is a huge topic in the industry right now. Modern processors use so much power that we're not talking about like a one or 2% power consumption savings by using liquid cooling versus air cooling. Instead, you can be talking about 10% or more of power consumption savings per server just based on using liquid cooling versus traditional air cooling with fans and heat sinks and all that kind of stuff. Or another way to look at it is for every 10 servers, you get to have another one running for free or well, kind of. And before we get too far in this, I just wanna point out that we are gonna say Quanta is sponsoring this because it was cheaper to fly me out to the cool rack than it was to send the entire cool rack set up all the way to me in Austin. But of course, like everything we do at STH, we're doing this completely editorially independently, so nobody gets to review this other than our team before it goes live. But hey, this is STH, so let's get to the hardware. Okay, this entire thing is called the Cool Rack, but instead of a C for cool, we have a Q because Q for Quanta or QCT. Now I'm betting most folks know who Quanta is, but if you don't know who Quanta is, they are a giant provider of servers. They make everything from hyperscale servers that go into clouds to things that go into enterprises. Okay, so let me just take you for a quick tour of the Cool Rack. So starting on the top of the cool rack, we have our switches. And the reason that we have our switches here is also because not only does QCT and Quanta make servers, but they also make switches. In fact, when we were first buying switches for the STH lab, I think that was like, I don't know, 2016, 2015, 2017, something like that. We actually purchased Quanta LB6Ms and then there were a couple other Quantas, I can't remember the model names off the top of my head, but we actually purchased like three Quanta switches and it was like a big deal, a big budget back then. But that was before like the open switching world even had things like Sonic and all that kind of stuff. So that was like really early days for like some, some organization that was as small as we were to be adopting that kind of technology. Now, one quick part that Quanta doesn't make in this is they don't make the uh, PDU, which is up top. The PDU is up there because if you have liquid cooling, you tend to have rack manifolds on sides. So you tend to have PDUs that go horizontally rather than vertically, just because it kind of helps you with managing the rack. But of course there are different options on that. And then just real quick, you're going to notice that we only have four nodes set up here. The reason that we only have four nodes is because these are the D54X nodes and uh, we have the, the one U chassis. And the reason is that we have two of the air cooled and two liquid cooled nodes because we wanted to kind of look at different things like different CPU options and also just kind of like what the impact of having liquid cooling is versus air cooling. Now, of course, normally you'd have like 30 something, 40 something servers in a rack, depending on how much power you have in your rack and all that kind of stuff. But in this case, we have four because, uh, well, you know, it's just me. Still, we have this running in the lab, so we're able to actually get numbers off it that we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, if you go to the bottom of the rack, you will see a CDU or cooling distribution unit. Now, if you haven't seen STH videos on liquid cooling in data centers before, what a CDU does is it has a loop and there's a loop that goes through the entire rack and that is really there to go and cool all of the servers in the rack. However, you have a lot of heat that builds up or it gets transferred from the servers into that liquid cooling loop. And so you need to get rid of that heat. And the way you do that is with a CDU. The CDU does a heat exchange between the loop that's in the rack and then some kind of facility water. You can also do things like, you know, end of aisle, like, uh, coolers or something like that. But the idea is that you're just kind of taking heat away from that rack. So that CDU has its own redundant power supplies and you also have features like redundant pumps. They even let me go and pull one of the pumps, which was fun. And by the way, those pumps are actually pretty heavy. Now, of course, you can do things like use facility water. You can use end of aisle or something like that, CDUs and all that kind of stuff. But probably the more interesting one is what Quanta is using with the cool rack. Because when you go to the back of the rack, you're gonna see something totally 
totally different than most racks that you'll see, and that is a giant wall of fans. Now these giant fans move a lot of air relatively efficiently. And you might be wondering, what are those fans for? And when we open up the door, you can see exactly what's in there, and that is these giant radiators. And let me just point out real quick that this is super useful for folks because if you have enough cooling just in your data center to go in and deal with the, the heat generated from all these servers and you also have enough power, well, this is a liquid cooling option that doesn't require things like facility water. Instead, you just are removing heat more efficiently from these 1U servers and then you're using larger, more efficient fans and the radiator so you have a, a just kind of more efficient setup and you're able to move heat out of the chassis and out of the rack more efficiently. So the cool thing here is that it's all self-contained. Now looking at the left side of the rack, you're gonna see that we have our rack manifolds. And these manifolds are there, so that way you can take the cool liquid and distribute that into each individual server. And then you can take the warmed liquid out of each server and then bring it back to the CDU. Now something that you're definitely gonna notice here is the fact that this is not set up for just four servers. This is set up for an entire rack of servers. We just have four for our little demo here. And in case you're wondering what the difference is between blue and red, blue means cool and red means hot. And that's pretty universal in all of the liquid cooling systems that we've seen. As you would expect, all of the fittings are quick disconnects. So you're able to go and pull them out and not have like a whole bunch of drips and like leaky fluid or something like that. Cause that's something that just nobody likes to see. Instead, these things just kind of, you know, you pull them out and then you pop the server out and you're ready to go. And there's not like, like liquid flying everywhere. And just to round out the hardware, I just want to show you guys some of the cool things in the back of this. Like, for example, there are these just giant hoses going to the radiators in the back of the rack. And we also just want to show you the other side of the CDU and all of the backs of the servers and networking, all that kind of stuff, because we had everything set up to be able to actually go and run workloads on these. Now, opening the D54Xs up, what you can see inside is that here's an example of like a liquid cooled version. You're gonna see that we have our two Intel Xeon scalable sockets, and these are really for fourth gen and fifth gen Intel Xeon scalable servers. And just something real quick here is that not only are we using the standard Intel Xeon like Sapphire Rapids parts that are current gen right now, but we also are using the Sapphire Rapids HBM parts. Now, if you've seen our Xeon Max piece, which I think, you know, that has over 100,000 views at the time we're recording this, that piece is awesome because it goes through all the really cool bits about Xeon Max. So if you want to learn about that, we'll link that in the description. And these things are really designed for high performance computing, which means that you're using a lot of power. And since you're using a lot of power, well, we need to move all that heat. And that is exactly why we have these liquid cooling blocks. You can see that the liquid cooling goes from the rear of the server in the cool loop. It goes through the two CPU blocks and then out of the back of the server. And even with that, you still have your RAM, you have your ability to add in cards and your different SSD options. I think you'll remember that we had both two and a half inch as well as E1S options on the front of these servers. I will just point out though that liquid cooling does take up one of the expansion slots. And then just to be complete, we're gonna show you the air cooled version of this. So you're gonna see that we have much larger heat sinks. And these days server processors are so hot than like one U form factor, especially if you're gonna have a full set of dims like this server does, you need to have little ears or dog ears or you know whatever you want to wings, some people call them, like whatever they are, you need to have some extra extension on your CPU heat sink. Otherwise you just simply can't cool the modern CPUs in a standard, just kind of like one U socket size. Now, one point I just want to be very clear on is that there are different types of ways that you cool inside of servers. One of them is that you like liquid cool every single component. And if anybody has ever installed the like liquid cooling like blocks for DDR5 or DDR4 memory, it is a total pain in the butt. So what a lot of folks do and a lot of companies do is that instead of that, they just cool the like really hot parts, the CPUs and maybe the GPUs with liquid cooling. And then they allow the chassis fans to cool things like the dims as well as the adding cards. Oh, and of course storage as well. Now, what all that means is that we do have fans in the system, but the difference is that instead of running these things at like super high percentages where they're not that efficient, we can run them at much lower RPMs and therefore they use a lot less power. 
And I just want to say thank you real quick to the QCT team that helped move the server rack because I was like in there and the lab was like pretty loud because there's a lot of air-cooled servers in there as well. And then uh, I looked at it and I was like, oh, well, that's that's good, but we can't really get good shots because of, you know, just kind of like how, how close the aisles are. So what if we took the entire rack and we moved it out to the like kind of lobby staging area and then they all looked at me like, oh, okay, yeah, you, you want to do that? Okay, yeah, cool. And then we actually did that. So again, thank you to that team. Okay, so let's talk about the performance and the power consumption impact. So one of the things that we did was something that we covered in our Intel Xeon Max bit, which is that we ran the Intel Xeon Max, the HBM only parts with uh, with just the HBM memory. So without having DDR5 DIMMs in. So if you remember just a couple seconds ago where I was talking about how hard it is to go and do that cooling of all the DIMMs and stuff like that with cold plates and stuff. Well, if you just have that HBM memory and you don't have DIMMs installed, then your cold plate is cooling both your CPU and your memory and you don't have to go deal with all that extra complexity. And so what we did was we took the Intel Xeon Platinum 8458P and then the 9458, which is the Xeon Max part. And we did that with the SNC off and then also SNC equals four. And if you want to know what that means, you can definitely go check out our video on Xeon Max again, because uh, we explained it all in a lot of detail there. And we're just going to show you real quick the difference between having an air cooled Xeon Platinum and having a liquid cooled Xeon Max CPU. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that we actually get a lot more performance because we're using that HBM memory. Now, of course, performance is always great, but let's talk a little bit about the power consumption and like what else is going on in the rack. Now, of course, QCT has monitoring tools. Now they have monitoring tools within the server. They also can see, you know, they have, all these modern servers have a bunch of different sensors in them. And then they also have things like monitoring of the CDU so you can see like flow rates and they can see temperatures and all that kind of stuff all throughout the system. So what we did was we not only looked at the ones that we had in the rack with the, just our little four that we were using for photos, but then we also looked at the full rack scenarios. And something to notice here is just kind of what the difference is between these two racks. So the first thing is clearly the temperatures. If you're looking at the difference in temperature between the liquid cooled ones, which are in that kind of like low 50 degree Celsius range, and then you compare that to the air cooled one, which are like, you know, pushing like 80 degrees Celsius. I think that really shows you the difference between the liquid cooled and also the air cooled one. And remember that on the liquid cooled one, we also are cooling the memory because we're using the HBM mode and not using just CPU cores. So that's with the HBM memory, we're still at a lower temperature. Now we can also go and look at things like how much all the fans are using and we're using over 200 watts less per server. And because we have, we're comparing full liquid cooled versus air cooled rack, we are getting over 10% in like, you know, a 10 kilowatt rack. We're getting over 10% difference between our liquid cooling and our air cooling. Now that's calculated as being the PUE of 1.26 versus 1.06, but I'll just point out the fact that, you know, usually you do PUE at an entire data center scale. Still though, you're saving a massive amount of power if you're saving over 10% just by going liquid cooling versus air cooling. Now, of course, not, we're not liquid cooling things like the switch in this scenario or anything like that. But still, I think the big thing that we can take away from this is like, number one, we're getting more performance by using Xeon Max. And number two, we're doing that, but by removing the DDR5 memory as well as liquid cooling, we are saving a massive amount of power. And that's why so many folks that are doing like high-end AI compute and also high performance computing stuff, those folks are really looking at liquid cooling because, well, if you're using a ton of power, this is starting to make a ton of sense. And before we wrap up, I just want to point out real quick that we got to see a massive number of additional servers from QCT. So of course we were looking at like one U and we're looking at one model air cooled versus liquid cooled. Of course we had two and a half inch and also e E1S, but at the same time, there are a ton of different QCT servers that we got to see and take photos of and all that kind of stuff. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about, you know, those QCT servers, let us know down below and maybe we can go do a review on the STH main site. And hey guys, I hope you like this this look at QCT's liquid cooling solution. If you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.